Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we will be talking about magic. You'll be learning magic. And magic, that is basically anything you can do that you can't explain. Magic is everything around us that we cannot explain. As soon as we explain it, as soon as we understand it, it's no longer magic. So, magic is anything you can do that is, to some extent, a mystery to you at the moment or to the other people around you. A magician is a person that can, that has reached the level of mastery, skill, ability, understanding, awareness that they can use to do things that most people don't get. They can say things and other people do go, how? How did you know that? How did you see that? How is that possible? So learning magic is basically honing in on your own unique skills and learning to do things that are, to some degree, almost magical, almost supernatural. It's being the fastest person in the world. It is being the person that can play basketball better than anyone else, can dribble with the ball so that nobody else can see where it is and can't keep up with you. It's the person that can stand on stage and perform tricks that nobody can explain. People can guess, but they have no idea how it happened. And only the magician knows and that is what makes the magician so special their level of development and growth and ability so a magician is a person that wants to surprise dazzle and spark curiosity and mystery they want people to get curious about the world they want people to rejoice in the mysteries of the world and everything we can't explain and you think with the level of science and progress that magic would disappear eventually but what tends to be the case is the more science explains, the more questions emerge. So there is more that we could do today than ever. There is more possibilities of magic than there has ever been before. I believe technology could be used to create magic. We could invent the ability to use smartphones and apps to do things that around us, like light up buildings, like create holograms, like uh, change all kinds release all kinds of scents and create all kinds of things and a lot of us would go wow how that's amazing and it's the fact that we've never done it before it's the fact that it's original that it is that makes it so magical and i want to say there are four elements of magic four key elements that you want to learn and master you want to find your element you want to find which metaphor works for you because each element is a metaphor that taps into your mind and into how it works and into how you think you want to master these four elements and what you want to do is you want to be able to use them and you want to be able to go into this metaphor you want to imagine envision yourself as this element and you want to use its powers what you want to do is you want to use its powers the thing is we do the most magical things when we're under pressure. Most magic works its best when we are under pressure. In the heat of the moment, we do things we didn't think we could do normally. It is by exposing ourselves to stress, to situations that are beyond our control to some extent, that we begin to start doing amazing things. Magic requires some levels of stress to work its to its fullest. So. You have to be able to take on challenges. You have to be able to put yourself in situations that are difficult. And when you are in these situations and when you're really starting to hit your limits and when you're starting to feel like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to keep up. I don't know how to manage this. That's when you want to use one of these four elements. And these four elements, they were uh, conceptualized in ancient Greece by various philosophers. They believed the world was made out of air, fire, earth, and water. And they believed that these elements made out the entirety of the world. So they were used to form everything around us. And of course, today, from a scientific standpoint, we know that's not the case. We know the world consists of a lot more than earth, fire, water, and air. But these metaphors work as a kind of basic introduction and it, they get you really into getting to know your mind. And they get you into really getting to know the universe and how the universe works. So philosophically, it works amazing. So Earth has often been associated with being heavy, slow, movable, working and enduring. Earth is what you are when you are in a situation 
and where things are pressuring you and where things are coming up and when there is a crisis. Earth is the thing that can stand tall. Earth is the thing that can hold its own. Earth is the thing that can stand like a tree, can uh, can hold on, can endure, can keep on going, even when it is when life is stressful. Earth can carry a lot of weight on its shoulders and can keep moving forward, can keep on being productive, even when things are difficult, even when things are heavy. So. An earth type is a person that has this remarkable amount of perseverance, endurance, durability. They can hold on. They don't break easily. They can stay the same. They can remain calm and collected. They can remain stable and secure. They can be associated with being protective and healthy. They are often very healthy and good vigor and good spirit. And they are often, they often make everyone around us more safe. Earth types are associated often with sensing, with being practical, realistic, down to earth. Earth is also associated with character, you know, having been somebody, having done someone, having gathered a history beyond yourself, having become some kind of myth. Basically, everyone knows who you are, everyone knows what you're capable of. They've seen you at work for 20 years, they've seen you do what you do, and they've come to rely on you, they come to depend on you, they come to respect your character and who you are. So an earth type wants to work towards character. Character is one of the core virtues of an earth type. Character is what you're aspiring towards, ethos, what you are as a person, what you want to be, what you want to become. And being true to yourself, not being a hypocrite, not contradicting yourself, standing true to your beliefs, standing for yourself, enduring even when it's difficult. Earth is one of the four ways to be. Then there is fire. Fire is passion. Fire is force. Fire is strength. Fire is the ability to move. Fire is the ability to evoke feelings and passion in yourself and in other people. When you're around a fire type, you tend to become more passionate. And fire types, they tend to spread more like energy and vibrance and change. They tend to make everyone care. They tend to make everyone want to do something. They tend to encourage action and powerful action against something. They tend to stand strong, stand up to challenge, stand up to opposition. They are competitive. They are ferocious. They are the people that speak the loudest. And fire is to so much associated with pathos, with feeling, with the ability to make people feel, make people care, make people believe, make people want to do, make people want to accomplish and to stand tall, even when there is a big force coming towards you, to keep on pushing forward yourself and to keep on fighting through it, to, sh to keep on fighting to a challenge so when you're in a stressful situation you can use the fire metaphor to imagine yourself to feel your own heat to feel your own passion and to let it drive you forward to let it push you forward water that is associated with adaptability with the ability to adjust to anything with the ability to move and to change your shape and form to when things get difficult, to take on a new form, to change your shape, to always be, to some extent, efficient, always adjusted to the situation, customizing yourself, to have strategy, to manage yourself, to have a flow, to have a path forward, to be productive. And it's associated with this ability to, when bad things happen, just adjust, to just move, to just... Uh, make sure it doesn't hit you to just make sure you stand keep on uh, using your situation to your advantage water uses its situation to ad advantage when Bruce Lee talked about martial arts he would say to his students be water be shapeless be take on uh, the form you need for every situation if the situation requires something of you become what the situation requires of you it is this ability to be extremely adaptable to be extremely uh, to be able to adjust to anything and it is to many to much extent the ability to manage your own emotions where even if you feel sad or anxious or even if you struggle with fear to be able to take on the form necessary to 
deal with the situation, to be able to adjust and to become your feelings, to become your experiences and to find appropriate, the best response to your feelings, the best way to resolve your experiences, your emotions and what you're feeling. Air, finally, is associated with ideas and communication, with changing, exchanging information. It's associated with being always in motion, always changing in shape, always adjusting, always becoming and transforming itself. Air is associated with change. Air is associated with ideas and with talking, exchanging ideas like we are doing right now. It's associated with, to some extent, being able to influence how other people think, not how they feel, but how they think, how they see the world, how they define the world, to be able to redefine the world, to be able to say what the world is, to see the bigger picture, and to be the person that looks at the world from a bigger picture and says, this is how the world can be defined and understood. To be able to interpret and to be able to create with your ideas various forms of inventions and solutions and concepts and stories. Stories that come to, to some extent, redefine how we look at and how we understand the world around us. So in your air, what you want to imagine yourself is, you want to imagine yourself outside your own body. You want to imagine yourself as the bigger picture, as the entire world. You want to imagine yourself everywhere at once. You want to see yourself being everywhere, being everyone, having every perspective, having every being every person, seeing things from every person's viewpoint, seeing every person's ideas, thoughts, being able to hear other people's thoughts, being able to read other people's minds, being able to uh, hear your own thoughts, your own mind, letting yourself form thoughts, letting yourself form ideas. So when you're in a stressful situation, always as an air type, remember to detach, to go into yourself, to look at the bigger picture, to think of the future, to think of where you're going, to use air as to your advantage. I believe these elements can enhance our ability in a situation, in a crisis, to persevere. So what you want to do is you want to use it as a metaphor. You want to basically see, imagine yourself in using these elements. So you want to be able to use it as an extra source of power. You know, I think, I believe that the human mind can do 25% more than it thinks. We have this idea of what we can do. And then we have what we actually can do. And it's a lot more than what we thought. So... We limit ourselves all the time, we play it safe by only taking on what we can, what we understand, what we already know. And so we never grow, so we never get any new information, so we re remain at the same level, we remain stagnant, we remain ordinary. Uh, when you talk about growth and self-actualization, all self-actualization theorists talk about a lot of self-actualization theories talk about going into this magical world that you don't understand beyond your comprehension, where things are happening that you don't know. And we are so afraid of this, we're so afraid of being in a situation we don't understand, that we don't have control over, that we don't have power over. We're afraid of being in these situations. We think we can't handle it, we, and so we avoid it, and so we remain static. But to become magical, we have to go into this world, and we have to practice, and we have to learn expose ourselves to challenges that we don't think we can do and then we have to do it and then we have to use that extra 25 percent to our advantage then we have to be able to use our full wit our full mind power everything inside of us all our resources to our advantage to accomplish it and you'll have moments where you go how how will i do it how will it be possible and it will be possible. In the end, it will be possible. You will be able to do it. And what you want to do is you want to ask yourself the right questions. If you find yourself getting stuck in this world of magic, thinking of questions you don't have the answer to, you want to think of better questions. You want to think of new questions. You want to imagine yourself. You want to change your perspective. You want to look at it from different viewpoints. Okay, now I'm being all airier. But what I'm really saying is use your elements, your thoughts, your strengths to your advantage. Think about what your strengths are. Is it air? Is it earth? Is it fire? Is it water? Am I enduring? Am I creative? Am I strategic? Am I passionate? Use what you are to your advantage. Use your powers, your strengths to do things 
other people that you can't do already and master yourself. You have so much within you, so much potential, so much power that you're letting go to waste right now. It's just leaking through. It's just passing through and you're not doing it. But don't stress over it. The time will come when you will find out who you are and you'll discover yourself and you'll understand yourself and you'll inevitably be exposed to challenge no matter if you want to or not. You'll be exposed to challenges and struggles. And that is when you will do the things you didn't know you could. That's when you will grow. That's when you will become, to some extent, magical. And that was the purpose of this video. So if you have any thoughts on this subject, perhaps you've done something that you didn't understand. Perhaps you have some kind of special power. Let us know in the comments down below what your special power is. What it is you can do that nobody else can. What it is that you can do that you can't explain. What it is that you... Uh, which, which element resonates the most with you and if you've ever used one of these metaphors or if what you think of when you're in a stressful situation let us know and if you like this video as always share it with people you think it might relate to and like and subscribe if you haven't already thank you all for being here and i hope to see you all in the next video